Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. After a failed rebellion against the capital, the districts of Panem send two young people between the ages of 12 and 18 to the Hunger Games, where they fight until only one survives. In District 12, Katniss Everdeen assures her sister, Prem, that she won't be chosen for the games. She then sings to calm her younger sister before leaving. Katniss crosses the district fence and retrieves her bow and arrows in the forest. She hunts a deer until her friend, Gail, interrupts her. He points out that it's reaping day, so she won't be able to sell the deer without attracting the peacekeeper's attention. Later, Katniss trades the supplies she collected in the forest for a ball of yarn. She's interested in a mockingjay pin among the vendor's items, so the vendor gives it to her as a gift. Moments later, Everdeen helps her daughters get ready for the reaping. Katniss gives Prim the mockingjay pin as a good luck charm to comfort her. All miners between the ages of 12 and 18 are then gathered in front of the town center for the reaping. Effie Trinket welcomes them with cheer and shows a film about the history of the rebellion and the Hunger Games. Then, Effie draws a name from the girls' bowl and announces this year's young woman, Prim. Everyone is shocked as Prim slowly approaches the stage. Katniss steps forward and volunteers to replace her sister. Prim refuses to let Katniss go, so Gail takes her away. Katniss is then escorted to the stage, and the audience gives a three-finger salute to honor and bid farewell to Katniss. Effie then draws from the boys' bowl and selects Peter Melark. Inside the town hall, Katniss says goodbye to her family. Prim cries, but Katniss quickly advises her on how to survive while she's gone. Prim begs her to win and returns the Mockingjay pin to Katniss for luck. Katniss then urges her mother to take responsibility, as Prim needs her. After a short while, the peacekeepers tear them away from Katniss's arms. Suddenly, Gail intervenes and encourages her to showcase her archery skills to gain favor from the capital. Katniss and Peta are taken to the train, where they see luxury and tables filled with food for the first time in their lives. During the journey, Peta tries to discuss their plans, but Katniss ignores him. Soon, their mentor, Haymitch, enters and sarcastically congratulates them. Instead of giving advice, Haymitch tells them to accept their deaths. The next day, Katniss finds that Haymitch is still useless, so she stabs the table near his hand with a knife. Haymitch is unimpressed, though he advises them to win the sympathy of the audience to get sponsors. Sponsors will send supplies that can save their lives. Shortly after arriving in the capital, Katniss meets her stylist, Sinna, who expresses sympathy for her situation. Katniss smiles, as Sinna isn't pretending that her situation is anything good. For the tribute parade, Sinna explains that the outfits are often inspired by what their districts are known for. For District 12, it's coal mining, but he promises to help her make a good impression. That night, the tribute parade floats carrying the tributes arrive as Caesar and Claudius make comments. The tributes wave to the adoring fans until everyone focuses on Katniss and Peta, dressed in black with synthetic fire on their backs. Everyone is put in the presence of the capital's president, President Snow. After the show, Effie takes them to her apartment, where they will stay until the games begin. Katniss is surprised by her luxurious private room, where the window offers fake landscapes. She chooses one that looks like the forest back home, but it reminds her of her family, and she turns it off. The next day starts with their training. The tribute from District 2, Cato, starts a fight with another tribute, accusing him of stealing his knife. But when Katniss checks above, she finds Rue, from District 11, hidden with the knife. Thresh from District 11 also sees her and takes pride in the young girl. That night, Haymitch observes that the tributes from Districts 1 and 2, known as career tributes, are trained until they volunteer for the games. They are the ones who often win, though Haymitch suggests that their arrogance may be their weakness. Peta emphasizes that Katniss is good with a bow, as her father buys squirrels that she hunts. Katniss then shares that Peta is strong, but he argues that this doesn't give him a chance to win, noting how his mother said that District 12 could finally have a winner in Katniss. This dampens the mood, so Peta leaves. Katniss remembers when Peta's mother beat him for burning bread, which he then threw to Katniss while she was hungry in the rain. The next day, Katniss sees the District 1 tribute, Glimmer, shooting arrows poorly, but the District 2 tribute, Clove, displays excellent knife skills. Peta struggles in training, so the career tributes laugh at him. Katniss tells Peta to throw some weights despite Haymitch's advice not to show their skills. 
Pita effortlessly throws a heavy metal ball across the room to prove to the career tributes that he's not weak. Later, Pita practices camouflage using paint, explaining to Katniss that he decorated cakes in the bakery. For her evaluation, Katniss fires an arrow but gets nervous and misses the target. The game makers lose interest in her, so they don't see when Katniss tries again and hits the target. Katniss gets annoyed when the game makers focus on a roasted pig instead of her, so she shoots the apple in the pig's mouth. Effie scolds Katniss for shooting at the game makers, but Haymitch just laughs it off. Later, Caesar announces the game makers' evaluations. The career tributes receive high scores, but to everyone's surprise, Katniss gets the highest score. At the president's mansion, Snow reprimands head game maker Seneca Crane for giving Katniss a high score after she practically threatened them. Snow emphasizes that it will be quicker to execute the tributes to set an example, but they allow a winner to give controlled hope to the districts. He orders Seneca to control the hope the games will stir up. The next day, Caesar interviews the tributes. Despite Katniss's discomfort, both Caesar and the audience love her. Katniss then spins on stage, causing flames to burst from the hem of her dress, surprising everyone. Pita is interviewed last and presents himself as friendly and funny. Caesar asks if there's a special girl back home, and he hesitantly admits to having a crush on someone. Caesar encourages him to win the games to win her heart. Pita emphasizes that he can't be with the girl he likes after the games because she's there with him, implying he likes Katniss. After the interview, Katniss confronts Pita and accuses him of making her look weak. Haymitch corrects her by saying that Pita made her desirable. He emphasizes that he can get sponsors for them by selling them as star-crossed lovers. That night, Katniss struggles to sleep and finds Pita looking out the window. She joins him and apologizes for accusing him earlier. Pita remarks that he doesn't want to be just a piece in the game and hopes that even if he dies, he'll die as himself. The next day, Cinna helps Katniss dress for the games. He shows that he secretly included the Mockingjay pin in her jacket. They then hug until it's time for Katniss to be lifted into the arena. Katniss finds herself in a clearing. The tributes are on their platforms, and in front of them are the initial supplies. Finally, the countdown reaches zero, and the tributes run. Peter runs straight into the forest while most grab supplies. The career tributes kill many while Katniss grabs a bag. Clove throws a knife at her, but she catches it with the bag. Katniss then heads for the forest, stumbling upon the tribute from District 5 whom she nicknamed Foxface. They stare at each other until Foxface runs away. Katniss runs as far as she can into the forest. After the bloodbath, cannons are fired to mark all fallen tributes. Katniss counts the cannons and notes that 12 tributes have already died. Katniss uses her hunting skills to track down a water source, build traps, and capture prey for food. She climbs a tree and secures herself on a branch for the night. Then, a screen in the sky shows all the tributes who died, assuring Katniss that Pita is still alive. Later, Katniss sees that someone has built a fire nearby. The tribute who built the fire is found by the career tributes, who then attack her. Katniss watches the career tributes laugh at the tribute they just killed, but to her surprise, Pita is with them. Pita seems to be guiding them to find Katniss, though they don't realize she's nearby. The next day, Katniss continues moving, and the game makers observe that she's near the edge of the arena. To divert her back to the center, they start a fire in the forest. Katniss flees from the fire and dodges the fireballs launched at her. Seneca coordinates the attacks to lead her to a river, where the career tributes finally locate her. The career tributes chase her, but Katniss reaches a tree and climbs quickly, thus staying out of reach. Kato tries to climb up, but he falls. Glimmer then shoots an arrow, but misses. Pita suggests waiting for her to come down since she can't stay up there forever. Seeing Katniss trapped in dealing with a burn, Haymitch negotiates with some sponsors. That night, Katniss receives medicine for her wound, which instantly relieves the pain. In the morning, the career tributes sleep comfortably, and Katniss spots Rue in another tree. Rue points to a tracker jacker nest above her and suggests that she could use it against the career tributes. Katniss carefully saws the branch it's hanging on, but still gets stung a few times until she finally succeeds and the nest falls directly onto the career tributes. The group immediately flees, but Glimmer stumbles and is surrounded. As she's dying, Katniss descends from the tree but struggles to escape as the tracker jacker venom makes her hallucinate. 
she finds Glimmer's body and retrieves her bow and arrow. Soon, Katniss sees Peeta approaching, telling her to run, so she runs through the forest until she faints. When Katniss wakes up, she finds leaves on her arms and Rue hiding nearby. Katniss helps Rue get something to eat, and Rue tells her she's been unconscious for two days. Rue assures her that Peeta is still alive, and shares that the enemies have all the supplies near the starting clearing. The next day, Katniss instructs Rue to light fires around the forest to lure the career tributes while she destroys their supplies. Rue suggests using a tune that the Mockingjays around the forest will repeat to communicate. The two hug before parting ways. Katniss arrives at the edge of the clearing and sees the supplies piled up. She also notices that the ground around the platforms has been dug up. Suddenly, the District 1 tribute, Marvel, notices the smoke in the forest and urges his allies to investigate. They leave a District 3 boy to guard the area. Katniss then watches as Foxface crosses the clearing to steal food. This helps Katniss understand that the career tributes dug up the mines used around the platforms and planted them around the supplies. Katniss shoots an arrow at a bag of apples on top, causing the fruits to fall and trigger the mines that explode the supplies. The career tributes return, and Kato breaks the District 3 boy's neck for failing to guard their supplies. Katniss runs back into the forest and whistles for the Mockingjays, but doesn't hear Rue's song repeated back to her. Katniss hears Rue scream, so she tracks her down and finds her trapped in a net. Katniss frees Rue, but Marvel appears and throws a spear. Katniss kills him with an arrow but sees Rue get hit in the stomach. Katniss cries as she holds Rue in her arms. Rue encourages her to win the games and asks Katniss to sing. Katniss sings the same song she sings for Prim as Rue passes away. As she dies, Katniss mourns. Then, she adorns Rue's body with flowers and gives the three-finger salute, which the people of District 11 imitate. Furious over the young girl's death, many people in District 11 start a riot. Because of this, Seneca considers killing Katniss, but Hamish persuades him not to turn Katniss into a martyr. Haymitch instead advises him to give the people something else to root for. Soon, Claudius announces that two tributes can win the games if they are both from the same district. Upon hearing this, Katniss searches for Peeta and finds him camouflaged on the riverbank. She helps him hide inside a cave, but Cato has injured Peeta, so he can't move much. Katniss promises to get medicine for him, but Peeta points out that he doesn't have any sponsors. Catching on, Katniss kisses him on the cheek. Shortly after, Katniss finds a package with a note from Hamish, telling her that the kiss wasn't enough. The package is soup for Peeta, so she helps him eat. Peeta recalls when he threw the bread to her and laments that he didn't give all the bread he had. He reminisces about the day Katniss volunteered to sing at a school assembly when they were young. He's been watching her ever since that day, implying that his affection for her is real. In the morning, Claudius announces that there will be a feast at the Cornucopia, where there will be items that each tribute needs. Katniss realizes that Peeta's medicine will be there, so she prepares. Peeta begs her to stay, so she kisses him and lies down with him. However, when he's asleep, Katniss leaves. Katniss hides in the forest near the supplies tent and sees four bags on a table. Before she can move, Foxface quickly grabs her bag and runs into the forest. Katniss hurries after, but as soon as she retrieves her bag, Clove throws a knife at her. Katniss shoots arrows at her, but is knocked down. Clove aims a knife at Katniss, who struggles to dodge. Soon, Clove pins Katniss's arms to the ground and taunts her about Peeta and Rue. Suddenly, Thresh grabs Clove and pins her against the tent. He accuses her of killing Rue and smashes her against the metal tent until her neck breaks. Then, he turns to Katniss and says he'll spare her life once for Rue. Katniss then grabs her bag and escapes. She reaches the cave and wakes up Peeta. She immediately applies the medicine to her wound, and then he offers to apply it to the cut clove made on her forehead. The tender moment between them catches everyone's attention. The next day, Katniss and Peeta separate to search for food. Suddenly, Katniss hears a cannon shot, so she rushes to look for Peeta and finds his jacket filled with poisonous berries. Peeta appears, and Katniss scolds him for picking the poisonous fruits. Later, they find Foxface dead with nightlock berries in her hand. They deduce that Foxface followed Peeta and stole the fruits. Katniss gathers the berries, hoping to use them against Kato. Before long, the day darkens, and Katniss thinks it means the game makers are hurrying to end the game. They hear something moving in the darkness, and soon someone screams. A cannon is fired, and they see that Thresh has been killed. The two cautiously advance until a beast leaps onto Peeta. Katniss shoots it with an arrow 
allowing them both to escape. More beasts emerge and chase them until they reach the clearing. Peta and Katniss climb onto the cornucopia, but Kato is there, waiting for them. Peta knocks Kato down, but he throws him off before using his sword against Katniss. Kato holds Katniss, almost within reach of the beasts, until Peta pulls him away. Katniss aims her bow at Kato, but he has Peta by the neck. Kato taunts her to shoot them, but Peta points to Kato's hand, so Katniss aims at it and shoots, hitting it. Peta pushes Kato off, allowing the beasts to devour him. However, they don't kill him immediately, so Katniss shoots an arrow into his head as mercy. When he's dead, the beasts leave. The two descend, hopeful to return home. However, Claudius announces that the previous change allowing two tributes to win has been revoked, so one of them has to die. Peta asks her to shoot him so the games can have their winner. Katniss refuses and takes the nightlock berries from her pocket. She gives half to Peta so they can die together. Before they can eat the fruits, Claudius interrupts them and declares them as winners. After the games, Hamish warns Katniss that the capital is not happy she won against them. Meanwhile, Seneca is escorted to a room, only to find a bowl of prepared nightlock berries waiting for him. Knowing how the capital might retaliate against her, Hamish instructs her to pretend to be so in love with Peta that she would rather die than be separated from him. With that in mind, Katniss acts passionately in public. On the train back home, Katniss tells Peta that she wants to forget what happened to them. The two are welcomed and celebrated back in their district. Unbeknownst to them, Snow closely watches their every move. After winning the previous Hunger Games, Katniss now lives a comfortable life in District 12. However, she still can't forget the horrors of the arena, as it was the first time in her life she had to kill people to survive. Gale tries to reassure Katniss, saying it wasn't her fault. Katniss parts ways with Gale because she will be leaving for a long time to fulfill the duty of conducting the victory tour through the districts. Katniss explains to Gale that her relationship with Peta was just a facade so that she and Peta could survive in the arena. Gale even kisses Katniss, thinking he might not be able to kiss her again in the future. When Katniss returns home, she is surprised to see President Snow visiting her, furious. President Snow shows Katniss the scene of her encouraging Peta to commit suicide with her by eating poisonous berries in the arena. Because of this scene, many citizens believe it was an act of rebellion against the country's rules. President Snow feels there will be a rebellion movement inspired by Katniss's action in the previous Hunger Games. President Snow knows that Katniss didn't truly love Peta, it was all an act. However, President Snow demands that Katniss show affection for Peta during the victory tour so that people believe what Katniss did was out of love, not an act of rebellion against the state. If Katniss refuses to do so, President Snow threatens to kill everyone Katniss loves, or even destroy the entire District 12. Katniss is frightened by the threat. The next day, Effie and Cinna come to meet Katniss and Peta, who are preparing for the live broadcast and the start of the victory tour. Katniss and Peta then leave home showing affection for each other in front of the cameras for viewers across the country to see. Katniss and Peta then board the train to begin the victory tour through the districts. On the train, Peta tries to reach out to Katniss, knowing that Katniss is still traumatized by what happened in the Hunger Games. Peta wants to help Katniss through these tough times together. They arrive in District 11, where Effie has already prepared the speeches that Katniss and Peta must deliver to the citizens gathered in the District 11 auditorium. Thousands of citizens gather for the event. Many are tense at seeing Katniss and Peta on stage. Katniss then sees pictures of Rue and Thresh, District 11 participants who died. Katniss can't contain her pain. They then ignore the script given by Effie and tell how their lives were saved by Rue. Katniss doesn't know how to repay this act. Rue's parents cry upon hearing Katniss apologize for failing to save Rue. A person then raises their hand in a gesture of rebellion, prompting many to do the same. The security forces then act brutally, capturing the elderly person and executing them in front of everyone. This leaves Katniss shocked and scared, as she didn't imagine the elderly person would be killed. Moments later, Katniss tells Peta and Hamish about President Snow's threat at her home. Snow wanted Peta and Katniss to show affection in public so that everyone would think it wasn't an act of rebellion. Peta is shocked to realize that there are still terrifying shadows even after they've won the game. Haymitch tells them that their victory is not an achievement but a curse. Because after that, they will always be watched by society for the rest of their lives.
Katniss and Peeta will become mentors for the next participants. They will be under the government's shadow for the rest of their lives. Hamid then advises Katniss and Peeta not to do anything that attracts attention and causes more unrest. They continue the tour through the districts, reading the prepared script and showing affection in public. However, this infuriates the population. People continue to make the gesture of rebellion, understanding that Katniss is being pressured. Katniss sees with her own eyes the people's anger against the government. Hamish tells Katniss and Peeta to be more serious in calming public unrest. Katniss then has an idea. She will announce that she and Peeta are going to get married, perhaps that will calm the unrest. They finally arrive in the capital, capital. At night, they go to the National Palace for the last session of the victory tour. All the important citizens of the country are present. The party is very luxurious. Katniss meets the new leader of the Hunger Games Committee, Plutarch Heavensby. Heavensby says that Katniss inspired him to replace Seneca Crane as head of the Hunger Games Committee. President Snow then begins his speech. He congratulates Katniss and Peeta on their engagement and impending marriage. President Snow wants Katniss and Peeta's love story to inspire everyone for the rest of their lives. At night, on the train back, Katniss watches CCTV recordings showing rebellion unrest across the country. Elsewhere, Snow also watches the same broadcast. He is very angry and wants to kill Katniss because her actions triggered the rebellion. Plutarch Heavensby then calms Snow, saying he has a better plan. When they arrive in District 12, Katniss immediately goes to find Gail. Katniss has heard about people preparing to resist the government. They then see several military vehicles passing by. The troops enter District 12, searching all illegal trade practices. The troops burn all the citizens' goods. Gail, feeling sorry, tries to help, but as a result, he himself is captured and punished with lashes in the town square. Katniss, Peeta, and Hamish then arrive to interrupt the officers who are torturing Gail. They manage to stop the officers, but the officers warn everyone to be careful because next time there will be no lash punishment, but execution on the spot for anyone who resists the government. They then take Gale inside and treat his lash wounds. A few days later, President Snow announced news about the upcoming Hunger Games event, the 75th, which is very special because every 25 years there is a surprise in this event. This time, in the Hunger Games, the chosen participants are men and women who have already won the previous Hunger Games from each district. Upon hearing this, Katniss and Peeta are immediately shocked and their bodies weaken. Katniss goes to find Hamish and asks him to volunteer as tribute if Peeta is chosen in the lottery, because they know Peeta is the weakest among the three and will surely die. Hamish is willing, but he can't do anything if, at the time of selection, Peeta volunteers as tribute. Katniss insists that Hamish promise to protect Peeta, no matter what. Katniss also bids farewell to Gale, and everyone gathers in District 12's auditorium for the tribute selection ceremony. Effie is trembling, unable to contain the sadness over what's happening to Katniss, as the only female representative is Katniss, who is chosen as the tribute. During the men's draw, Peeta is chosen. They know they won't survive this time. Their departure is accompanied by the rebellion gesture of all citizens of District 12. Katniss and Peter raise their hands and are then immediately taken to the capital. Upon arriving in the capital, Hamish advises Katniss and Peter to forget their previous tactics, as this time their enemies are former champions with experience in winning the games. Hamish suggests they choose other participants who can become allies because without friends, the first thing they'll do in the arena is kill Katniss and Peta. He informs them about the District 1 participants, Gloss and Kashmir, who are highly trained and dangerous, as well as the District 2 couple, Brutus and Enoberia, who are equally dangerous. From District 3, there are BT and Wyrus, who are very intelligent in science. And from District 4, there's Finnick and his partner Mags, who volunteered in place of another tribute. Mags is the District 4 mentor. Katniss and Peta prepare for the parade. At this point, Finnick approaches to introduce himself but Katniss still distrusts everyone. They prepare, and the tribute parade is held. They ride on a chariot before hundreds of thousands of spectators in the Capitol's auditorium, and much like before, Katniss and Peeta wear fire-catching outfits. After the event, Hamish introduces the District 11 tributes, who will be Katniss's friends in the arena. Katniss encounters Johanna, the District 7 tribute, in the training center and sees several people training seriously. Katniss approaches BT and Wyrus, then teaches them how to make fire properly. As a thank you, they reveal how the energy shield protecting the sponsor's seats and the committee works. 
Katniss then approaches Mags, admiring her courage in volunteering, and asks Mags to teach her how to tie fishing knots. After finishing, Katniss demonstrates her archery skill, hitting all moving targets without missing. All the tributes are impressed by Katniss's ability. That night, Haymitch advises Katniss to choose who will be her ally in the games. Katniss and Max choose each other, while Peta seems disappointed with Katniss's choice. The next day, a demonstration of each tribute's individual skills is held. When it's Katniss's turn, after Peta, she cries upon seeing a painting of Rue on the ground, made by Peta. Angry, Katniss grabs a dummy and hangs it in front of the sponsors and the committee as a form of protest. The next step is the individual interviews with each tribute, conducted by Caesar. At this event, Katniss is forced to wear a wedding dress by order of President Snow, but Cinna modified the dress. During the interview, most tributes express their dissatisfaction with the government and disagree with the games, wishing they would be cancelled. Johanna explodes in anger because, after her victory, she is now trapped in the games again. Katniss stands out wearing a beautiful wedding dress. Caesar asks Katniss to spin, hoping the dress will catch fire again. Katniss spins, and the wedding dress transforms into a black dress with wings, symbolizing the Mockingjay, a symbol of rebellion. When it's Peta's turn, he tries to lie, saying that Katniss is pregnant with his child, which prompts an immediate reaction from the audience, who asks the government to cancel the Hunger Games because Katniss is pregnant. After the event, Haymitch informs that despite Peta's lie about Katniss's pregnancy, it doesn't stop the government from proceeding with the Hunger Games. Effie then gives Haymitch a gold bracelet and Peta a gold necklace as symbols that they are a team. The next day, everyone prepares to enter the arena. Cinna accompanies Katniss as she is equipped with a tracking device and flown to the Hunger Games arena. Upon arriving at the location, when Katniss enters the lift capsule, some armed soldiers appear and beat Cinna to death for modifying Katniss's wedding dress. Then, Katniss rises to the arena, which looks different from the previous Hunger Games. This time, the central arsenal is in the middle of a lake, and the Hunger Games begin. Katniss immediately jumps and runs toward the center to grab her weapons. She encounters Finnick, who is wearing a gold bracelet. Finnick promises to help Katniss and soon kills a person behind them. Katniss sees Peta fighting in the lake. Fortunately, Peta manages to survive. She watches the District 1 and 2 participants, who have formed an alliance, then they run into the forest. As they walked, Peta accidentally hits an energy shield, it explodes, and he is thrown away, unconscious. Finnick then performs mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and they manage to revive Peta. Fortunately, with everything okay, they continue walking carefully through the forest. When everyone is dehydrated, a parachute with supplies approaches. It's a delivery from Haymitch containing a water spigot. Katniss installs the spigot on a tree, and suddenly, water gushes from it. They can finally drink. They hear a strange sound, and lightning repeatedly strikes a tree in an unusual manner. While the others rest, Katniss sees a strange fog approaching. Upon touching it, she discovers that the fog is poisonous. She orders everyone to flee from the fog. Finnick carries Mags, and as they run, Peta gets injured in the fog and ends up falling further ahead. Katniss can't carry her friend, and Mags, in a sacrificial act, enters the fog and dies. After running for some time, the poisonous fog disappears on its own. Those who were poisoned find out that the water there can neutralize the poison. Katniss, Peta, and Finnick cleanse themselves from the fog's poison. After everything calms down, suddenly, dozens of monkeys with sharp teeth go crazy and attack them. Katniss and Peta flee towards the edge of the lake to escape the monkeys. When a monkey is about to attack Peta, a disguised participant appears and saves Peta's life but ends up severely injured by the monkey attack and dies when they reach the lake's edge. Magically, the monkeys return to the forest, and a plane comes to retrieve the dead participant's body. Peta doesn't understand why this person sacrificed their life for him. The next day, they see something strange, a strange water torrent rushing rapidly from the top of the hill towards the central lake, and this sudden event ends up killing a participant. They are hit by a rain of blood, killing Johanna's District 7 companion. They see lightning striking the same tree repeatedly. Thanks to Wyrus, Katniss realizes that the lake is structured like a clock. After lightning strikes the tree every hour, a horrific event occurs on each side of the arena, like the poisonous fog, the monkey attack, the torrent, the blood rain, among others. They realize that the arsenal in the center of the lake is structured like the hands of a clock. 
When they are in the middle of the lake, a participant from District 1 appears and kills Wyrus. Katniss immediately shoots him. Then, other participants from District 1 and 2 attack them. From the control center, Heavens B orders the arsenal to spin, disorienting them for some time. When the arsenal stops spinning, Katniss is saved by her friends. Moments later, BT has an idea, he will tie a wire to a tree that is frequently struck by lightning and lead the wire to the lake. Thus, if the District 2 participants are on the beach, they will be electrocuted when lightning strikes. Everyone agrees to the plan. At night, they move towards the lightning tree. Upon arriving there, BT ties his wire to the tree. Katniss and Joanna head towards the lake with the wire, while Finnick, Peta, and BT stand guard. Along the way, Katniss and Joanna are attacked by District 2 participants. Suddenly, Joanna attacks Katniss, injures her arm, leaving her bleeding, and abandons her alone. Katniss, recovering, thinks that Joanna betrayed her. Worried, she returns to look for Peta but finds only BT unconscious. Finnick approaches, and Katniss, suspicious, thinks he will attack her, but he doesn't. Katniss then ties the wire to the tip of an arrow and shoots it towards the dome when the lightning strikes. The lightning hits the arrow, causing an error in the game's control. The arena dome is destroyed, and an aircraft appears to take Katniss's body away. Moments later, she wakes up on the plane next to BT, who is unconscious, and finds Hamish and Heavensby, who have been planning everything from the beginning. Heavensby is a member of the rebel forces fighting against the government. They plan to take Katniss to the rebels base in District 13 because the revolution has already begun. Hamish informs that Joanna managed to remove the tracking device from Katniss's arm, but Peta still has his and was captured by the government. Upon hearing this, Katniss becomes furious and has a rage outburst for failing to protect Peta. She is then sedated and loses consciousness. Days later, Katniss wakes up in an unknown location with Gale by her side. Gale informs her that her family is safe as he took them to a safe place, but the bad news is that District 12 was destroyed, leaving it in ruins. Katniss is very saddened to realize that this really happened.